What I want to discuss today is um, using the Arnold uh, stand-in process. So what that allows you to do, right now I've got a live scene in Arnold. Let me just kind of unwind this and show you what I've got. Basically got a ground plane, very, very large ground plane actually, uh, on a layer that's frozen. So here it's on a reference mode. So that's in the reference mode. And we've got a, a directional light and then a dome light with an HDR on it. Let's take this back into reference mode. Um, and if you want to preview in Arnold, um, sometimes it can be as quick as just uh, switching over to this little tab and then you've got this little uh, render window that opens up. You can extend this out a little bit as well. So you can do some real-time previews. On the plane, on the ground plane, I've basically loaded a um, it's a uh, matte shadow material, so let me just uh, highlight the plane for a second. So it's basically got an AI uh, shadow matte material. So basically it'll pick up sort of shadows and, and cast them. Um, now I'm working on a laptop, I think it is a little bit limited here, so let me just temporarily switch over to the real renderer. And um, what I basically want to show you is, like I said, using Arnold stand-in. So if you have a lot of objects that are repeating in a scene or if you need to mass produce something, it could be piles of debris, it could be columns, it could be um, either static characters or even animated characters. So if you want to do like an architectural visualization where you have, you know, dozens or hundreds of people walking in a station or walking in a certain location, you can actually load this and, and load it fairly quickly in a scene. So this, this scene took 10 seconds to render. Um, and let me just see if I can uh, switch back to this Arnold view. It's always nice to get a live update. For some reason, my character sometimes pops out of view. Um, so, <coughs> what I'll show you, let's just stop that preview, is the stand-in system. It's really fantastic for this. So, if you go to Arnold, go to stand-in, export stand-in. Now there are some options in here so you can go in. It defaults to the AS format. Um, <laughs> I don't know much about uh, the AS format but uh, it seems to be the preferred default for um, for Arnold. And now as I mentioned you know it, you can go through the options and explore those in further detail. I'll link to an article that discusses some of those things from Autodesk. So you can export all these options. You can also as I said turn on a sequence option and so it'll basically I think bake a keyframe for every single frame of uh, animation or you can even have it bake more than a keyframe or less than a keyframe per frame. Uh, in this case we don't need a, a sequence it's just a simple static mesh. So again I'll just say export selection so I'll set it to EQ dot ass <laughs> ASS and I'll uh, replace the one that I have there and then it's as simple as going back to Arnold, stand in, create stand in. So it's similar in a way to the referencing system of Arnold or of uh, Maya, I should say. So I'm going to locate the EQ. This is uh, the earthquake model, by the way, from um, from Pixelogic and ZBrush. So um, what you should basically see are the one of the main advantages of this is that you know you're not seeing as much of the mesh as you normally would, and you can change that option, by the way, in the top of the settings here. So you can set it to uh, bounding box per object, or you can have kind of the wireframe show up, or poly wireframe. Uh, let me just deselect so we can see that. Um, point cloud, so point cloud can actually be a little bit lighter than some of the other options. Uh, for for my use, you know, bounding box is just fine, especially if you're going to load this into the scene dozens of times. So the last frame I did uh, took about 10 seconds to render. And the idea behind the system, too, is like I said, if you have to mass duplicate an object, again, piles of debris, piles of other objects, it should allow you to render without hardly any performance hit. So you could literally have the equivalent of, you know, hundreds of times this object or potentially hundreds of thousands uh, more polys or millions more polys of mesh on screen, but it's simply calling the same object over and over. I believe it does a bit of a pre-calculation as well. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but let me just show you now if I make a little army of these guys. So um, I'll zoom out. I'll hit Control D to duplicate. Shift D, which will duplicate with the last command here. So I'll do this a bunch more times. And then I'll select all the stand-ins. So and I'll hit Control D on those to make a row. And then Shift D all the way back. So let's... Now normally this would completely choke out this, this system. I'm working a pretty decent uh, Dell laptop, but in theory, you know, there's no way I'd be able to, you know, move around the scene this fast with this many objects. 
Um, and if I, let me just try to zoom a little, uh, pull a little bit wider here. If I render this at render time, let this thing calculate again. You know, you see the calculation actually doesn't take that much longer uh, to, to spit out. So um, it's a really, really incredible system. Again, my render time might be a little bit higher. It's averaging around anywhere between 9 and 11 seconds, and we'll see how long it takes for it to finally finish this. So about 12 seconds. If I did this with actual mesh, it could be, you know, a minute, two minutes, ten minutes longer. So again, really, really useful system. Um, I'll sort of show you guys another example. Let me uh, create a new scene, or I think I have another scene loaded here. No, I guess I, I'll take out uh, these objects, the stand-ins. So I'll just delete these. So um, yeah, I'll delete Earthquake as well. And what I'm going to do is simply go in and go to Stand In, Create Stand In. So I've already exported a piece of mesh from from some photogrammetry online. So this is a set piece. So I'll uh, try to zoom in. This thing is actually quite large. And if we go back to Arnold, Render View, you'll see uh, that piece of mesh. So it's basically this sort of uh, mostly captured piece of uh, geometry. So again, I might just switch on the, the poly wireframe so I can see what's there. Now the great thing about this too, again, you can scale this, you can rotate it randomly. Let me just uh, scale the sucker down and I'll use the bounding box again just for speed's sake. So again, if you're dealing with uh, pieces of mesh, piles of debris, columns, you know, arch huge architectural pieces that might be really, really complex uh, for your scene, this can be incredibly useful for that. So I'm just going to duplicate and move off here and then try to, there we go, duplicate a bunch of these. So same exact scenario as uh, Earthquake, basically. And then I'll uh, Control D, slide them back, and then Shift D to repeat. It's kind of like a quick array option. So if we go in, back to Arnold, back to Render, right? we'll see these things pop up, and um, it's rendering really, really fast. Again, the great thing with, with this sort of thing is you know you can randomize all this stuff. So I, I'll show you kind of a couple quick tools that I have for doing stuff like this. So if you're um, trying to randomize some things in your scene, um, that can help speed up your production. So if, for example, you select all of these stand-ins, you've got kind of the same piece of mesh. Usually I recommend between you know sort of five and six random pieces. So it could be rocks, um, boulders, pebbles. Again, it could be piles of debris like shattered broken wood bricks, things like that. Um, I'm going to go into my uh, custom panel here and I've got a, a randomizer script which uh, I can post a link below so you can randomly rotate on Y so each object randomly rotates. You can randomly scale uniformly so now we have big and small rocks right and even just with one piece if you're doing something like this it's amazing how fast you can render these things now again there is a problem because uh, the back side of that mesh is not closed but I think you guys start to get the idea of the power uh, of this uh, stand-in system so it's a lot lighter on your scenes you're not loading the mesh directly only re uh, loading it at render time um, or if you have like I said complex repeating architecture you can take one sort of section that repeats cleanly and then load it as a stand-in it should uh, essentially uh, dramatically speed up the rebranding process. But one last version of this uh, that's kind of fun. So if you grab something like a torus, uh, I might actually scale the torus up. So let me just grab this thing. So as I mentioned, you know you can um, adjust these things and uh, change their pivots, change their scale, do all sorts of stuff like that. So if I, uh, I believe I have to take this object, then this object. I've got the um, Maya bonus tools. So um, yeah, basically, I believe you select your, your object you want to distribute, then the distribution object. And if you go to Bonus Tools, Edit, uh, Duplicate on Object. Um, oops, sorry. I always do this the wrong way. So yeah, Donut first, and then the object you want to duplicate uh, onto the other object. Go to Bonus Tools, Edit, and then go to Duplicate on Object. And um, we can randomize. Uh, and maybe I'll make, I don't know, 500 copies. I'll see if there's enough faces for that. Sometimes it'll spit out an error if you don't have enough faces. So maybe I'll just try 100 and replicate. Okay, try that one more time. <laughs> Bonus tools, edit, duplicate an object, replicate there. So once you do that, right, and then <laughs> we can go into our uh, Arnold render view. 
again, this is using the stand-ins, so it should be super quick, super easy, right? So again, if you've got lots of tiny little things like rivets on an object or a ship, um, you know, these little kind of shortcuts and tricks can actually really help speed up your render and production time.